Okay, this next little bit is real mathy, so put your nerd hats on. What am I talking about? I'm talking about equilibrium points. Yeah, um, points of no change in our system, aka our derivatives are zero. Ouch. All right, for a two by two, the ones I'm focusing on, the two by two system we're used to, a dx dt dy dt, is gonna be that guy. Three things can happen at the origin. It can be stable or a sink where everything sucks into it or a saddle where s things get sucked in and spit out or unstable called a source where everything comes from it. Okay. Now there's a test to see what the origin is on these two by twos, whether it's stable, saddle, or unstable. Oh no, I wish I had this test from my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, all right, for the test, let's look at the trace. The trace is the sum of the first diagonal. Yes, A plus E. And we're gonna look at the, we're gonna look at the determinant, a little whoosh, whoosh. Yes, now we'll let the trace be beta and the determinant be gamma. If gamma is smaller than zero, then the origin is a saddle. All right, done deal, over. If, however, um, the determinant is bigger than zero and beta is smaller than zero, then your origin is stable. Yeah, okay. If the determinant is bigger than zero and the trace is bigger than zero, then you're unstable. Who? Oh. Um, if. The determinant is bigger than zero and the trace is zero, then the origin is a center. What does this mean? On um, your phase portraits, you're gonna have a circle. Yes. Okay, and if b squared minus four gamma is smaller than zero, then the sink or source is stable or unstable spiral, respectively. AKA, if it's a sink, then it's gonna be stable spiral. If it's a source, then it's going to be an unstable spiral, meaning that it's going to spiral in if it's a sink, and it's going to spiral out if it's a source. Every once in a while, you'll find something in mathematics that absolutely fascinates you. This is one of the things that fascinates me. If I took my um, 2 by 2 coefficient matrices and I tried to find my eigenvalues, uh, and you know, do the usual trick, a minus lambda times the identity matrix. I would take the determinant, and then I would set that determinant equal to zero. Yeah, after you first enter out your last gather like terms, ba bam you're right here. Take a look at that, man. But wait, there's more. We previously defined our beta to be a plus e, the trace, and our gamma to be a e minus c b, our whoosh, whoosh, determinant. Oh, put it in here. Solving for lambda, dog. That means um, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. Yeah, so it's minus b plus and minus square root b squared, getting rid of the negative, minus four a c, yeah, all over two a. Okay, so let me take these two, these two eigenvalues. I'm gonna separate them up just because I want to do a little something. Um, I separated the two fractions, separated the two values. I take it up here, because now what do I want to do? I want to consider the sum of my two eigenvalues for my two by two system. Okay, so then this is b over two plus, you know, the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two. Uh, let's just call it stuff, right? So I got b over two plus stuff, and then I'm gonna add that to B, b over two minus that very same stuff because I got the plus case and the minus case. Oh geez, they fight. Looks like we lost all our stuff. Half of b plus half of b makes an entire b. Ooh wee. So the sum of the two eigenvalues is going to be the trace. What? Okay, let's take a look at the product. Yes, using my two eigenvalues I have 
B over 2 plus stuff and B over 2 minus stuff. It so seems to me that I have the difference of squares. So it's going to be this one squared. Okay. Minus that one squared. Okay. So then I trot my stuff out. Remember my stuff was the square root of B squared minus 4 gamma all over 2. So then when I squared both sides, I got the radicand and 4 on the denominator. Then I separated this fraction, the two fractions, distributed in, and then that's how I got that piece right there. Notice what happens with b squared over 4 minus b squared over 4. Yes, they fight, you're out of here. And then these guys reduce and you're left with gamma. Oh my. So the product of my two eigenvalues is going to be the determinant? What? Yeah. And then this is my summary. The sum of the eigenvalues is B. Uh-huh. The product of the eigenvalues is gamma. Oh! Incredible. We've now got enough background information to talk about what this test is really doing. I'm working on the 2 by 2 Yes. Uh, I know that B is the trace and it's the sum of the eigenvalues and that gamma is the determinant and that's the product of the eigenvalues and in a 2 by 2 my general solution is constant eigenvalue eigenvector 1 e to the eigenvalue t plus um, c2 or second constant second eigenvalue, second eigenvector, yeah, okay, so we've had this test, boom, I rewrote it in summary, right, what is it about, it's all about, um, in big T's, yes, it's all about the big E's, yes, it's all about the exponents, okay, so, if gamma is smaller than zero, it's a saddle point, and here's why. If gamma is smaller than zero, then that product is negative. If this product is negative, that means that they have opposite, opposite signage. Yes. That means that these guys are going to have opposite signage. Yes. That means as t gets big, this one's going to go to zero, and this one's going to go to infinity, or vice versa. That's why you're getting some different action at the origin. Yes. Okay, now if your um, determinant is bigger than zero and your trace is smaller than zero, then you're stable. And here's why. If the determinant is bigger than zero, that means these are positive. That means they have the same sign. Okay, which sign? That's why we're looking at the trace. Because they have the same sign, you're going to add. And if it's smaller than zero, that means both their signs are negative. Yes. So that means as t goes on, as t goes on, this term is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's eventually zero and it sucks into a sink. Yes. Okay. So then, if my gamma is bigger than zero, yeah, and my beta is bigger than zero, that means they have the same sign and both of them are positive. Yes, for the same reason on this guy. So this is going to blow up, this is going to blow up, and the whole thing is just going to blow up. Yes. Now, let's take a look at this. This says they have the same sign and the trace is zero. Ooh. And then this one, we've seen that previously. It's a spiral. Because why? You're getting complex values at that point. Mm -hmm. Finally, we can hit up some examples. Okay, so then a little whoosh, whoosh. This is going to be a minus 8 minus 3, which gets me minus 11, which makes this smaller than 0. So this is a SATA.